Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we've got another review. Today we're gonna to be reviewing this 2014 Ford Mustang GT Premium. All right guys, so this 2014 Ford Mustang GT Premium is practically stock, but it is slightly modified. But I'm still very, uh, I'm looking forward to this review. This is actually the first time I had a Coyote on my channel. And again, they're, they're great cars. I'm gonna go more in depth to the, like that overall drivetrain and the Coyote engine in a minute. But I do have a soft spot for S197s. As you guys know, I do have a 2008 V6 Mustang myself. It's been on the channel multiple times. So I do just like this overall body style. Now that being said, guys, this uh, body style, it's the 2013, 2014. It's the last S197. It was basically, I guess the second generation S197, but it was uh, a facelift. So basically how it went from 2005 all the way up to 2014. Uh, initially you had the 05 to 09 Mustangs that had the 4.6 for the GTs, the 4.6 liter V8 and the 4.0 uh, V6 and then in 2010 they changed the body around but they kept the same exact drivetrain from all the way from 2005 and then in 2011 they actually introduced the Coyote engine for the V8s as well as the Cyclone engine for the V6s the 3.7 I believe liter V6 and then in 2013 they went around and actually did a facelift on the 2011 and 2012 models including different uh, again, like whole different uh, body panels, different lights. I don't know how much they changed. It was just basically like kind of like a basic aesthetic facelift. But again, they did just keep the same drivetrain from 2011 all up to 2014. So staying on the topic of the body of this Mustang, this specific Mustang is actually finished in this like darker kind of like grayish silver paint. It's metallic. It's really, really good. The actual factory paint color name for this car is ingot silver which honestly like while looking at it in person it looks more of like a kind of dark gray in my opinion and plus you have from factory the matte black twin i guess racing stripes that go up the entire car and in my opinion it does look very aggressive very good the pairing of like this darker gray like metallic paint with the matte black stripes definitely makes it look a lot more meaner now this specific paint, Ingot Silver, was actually one of nine exterior paint options for this specific year Mustang, the 2014 Mustangs. So another aspect I really, really like about these 2013, 2014 Mustangs are these, the, again, the new like facelift updated LED taillights as well as the headlights. The headlights have a really cool like menacing daytime running light, kind of like LED strip look. And these taillights back here, you can see the kind of like red squares around and the LEDs actually in the center. Um, basically those three LEDs in the center, they turn like really, really bright LED white when you go into reverse and they're also sequential. So they work as a turn signal as well and they're basically sequential. So it goes like one, two, three, all the way to the outside. And it, I just think the overall styling does look really, really cool. Plus they're LEDs. So you can go ahead and tint them and they'll still be pretty bright. All right, so now moving on to the suspension of this car. Basically, all the way around is just traditional McPherson-style struts. And obviously, in the back, like I said before, it is not an independent suspension. It has a 8.8 live rear axle with an LSD from factory. And I believe that this GT actually came with 355 gears from factory as well. Now, that being said, the owner actually does have 
BMR lower control arms. In the back here, you can actually kind of see them that red, they're red, they're right there. He says that it does help with, I guess, wheel hop in the back. It does help the rear wheels just stay planted a little bit better. Now, another thing too with the premium package, uh, the owner did get 19 inch alloy wheels from factory. Obviously they're the stock original wheels, so you can see they are a little bit beat up. You do have some curb rash here and there, but it's the, it's the same setup all the way around. It's not staggered. And these wheels are actually wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport tires and all the way around they are 255s by 40s by 19s. And underneath the wheels, and again, another feature that came with the premium package, you can see the Brembo's. The logo is actually faded on this side, but I do know that on the driver's side here, you can actually see the Brembo logo. And it's pretty cool that these actually came with the bigger brakes from factory. I think it looks like, it looks just like double pistons in the front and a single piston caliper in the rear. But you can see that the rotors are actually slotted as well. All right, guys, so now we have the hood popped on this 2014 Mustang GT. And underneath the hood, you can see the pretty iconic 5 liter naturally aspirated four valve per cylinder double overhead cam V8 Coyote engine that is in this car. Now, this engine is very unique and it has a lot of potential from factory for boost. And big, and big power. Now, yes, even though it does have a lot of potential for big power from factory, I don't really know how much, I guess, boost you can run on this thing with the factory internals. I don't really know how much power you can put down, but this is kind of, I mean, this platform, this Coyote platform is kind of Ford's, answers, Ford's answer to the LS platform, one could argue, because it's very simplistic. It does have a lot of potential, and now we are seeing a lot of Coyote swaps with not just older Mustangs, but other cars as well. Now, to bring it back to this specific car, this 2014 Mustang GT from factory makes 390 foot-pounds of torque at 4,250 RPMs and 420 horsepower at 6,500 RPMs. Now, this Coyote engine, at least in this year uh, car, is actually paired with the TR6060 Tremec transmission. And that transmission is actually the same that's offered in the V6, the GTs, and the GT500s for this, uh, I guess, body style. Now, that being said, yes, in all of those cars, I believe there's completely different gears. I think in the GT500s, the gears are actually lower than the GTs because they have the higher top speed and all that. But another thing too about this transmission is that it also is capable of some big power. But the one thing that you do really have to change in these cars if you're going to push power is the clutch. I think the clutch is good for just about 500 brake, ho brake horsepower. I could be wrong. I don't know for sure. If you know more, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Now that being said guys, from factory this entire setup does actually have very impressive miles per gallon numbers as well from the factory. This car actually has an average of 15 city miles per gallon and a 26 miles per gallon during highway driving for a combined 19 miles per gallon. Now that being said, the car actually has a range on a full tank of around 240 city miles and 420 highway miles. This specific uh, car, I know you guys could probably tell, is, again, like I said before, it's pretty much stock, but the owner actually does have a SSC tune from California, and he also does have a JLT oil catch can, which I guess the tune, I guess, just makes it push out a little bit more power from factory, but that do is gonna affect the gas mileage number. So I'm not entirely sure what this car makes. Now, besides that, the only other mod that might possibly affect the power output is the owner actually does have a resonator delete as well as an axle back muffler delete so it's basically the stock exhaust manifold uh to the catalytic converters but after that it's pretty much a straight pipe i will get a startup clip of it in a bit i can guarantee you guys that it does sound pretty pretty aggressive one other thing too that i would just want to mention before i move on from the engine bay is that the owner actually did say that this sway bar came with the car when he bought it uh, we believe that it is factory. It doesn't look like the strongest sway bar out there, but again, that still is a pretty cool feature. All right, guys, so now we are going to be moving on to the interior of this 2014 Mustang GT. 
Now, one thing people often say about these S197s is that they age pretty poorly, they're pretty outdated, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, honestly, uh, you guys know, if you've watched any of my videos, I don't really care about interior that much. And that being said, I actually do really like the interior of this car, honestly. It's not too much. It still is pretty simplistic. I actually pulled up my car right next to it, my 2008 Mustang. Um, just to kind of compare but one thing I really did want to talk about were these door panels now these door panels I think uh, Ford did a great job on them and I do think that because if we go around to the older generation uh, S197 the 05 to 09s these door panels suck so much they are like this weird like plastic polyester I, I don't even know what this material is but they're literally just glued and I live in New Jersey, so we have very cold winters and very hot summers and everything in between. And normally if you fix them in like the fall going into winter time, they're okay. But in the summer months, uh, right now I'm filming this, it's August, it's not too hot out today. But normally in the summer months, these actually heat up and they just peel off like that. And as you can see on the other side, I did fix that like last month, so it's okay right now. But yeah, give that like a month or two and that's gonna be bad as well. So I actually might make a video on this in the future, but honestly, most of the fixes that I've done for it are kind of just temporary fixes, where with the newer S197, Ford actually just turned around and kind of just put a much like, I guess, higher quality like leather in this little part. Plus you can tell the overall shape is a little bit different. But again, this is a S197. So the frame and like all dimensions and everything are pretty much exactly the same as this car. So I was actually even thinking about taking door panels out, out of this car and just putting it in, into my car. So anyway, uh, to get back on topic, to get talk about this car. So one other thing this owner did do to this specific Mustang is he basically just gutted the entire trunk and no carpet, no uh, spare tire. Um, just a little bit more weight reduction, I guess. Something that most people kind of overlook, but again, if you're gonna do this, you gotta keep in mind that you're not gonna have a spare tire in case you get a flat. You can uh, see in the middle, it is an automatic. Uh, me personally, I like manuals. I think manual Mustangs are awesome, but I am still excited to drive this car today because it is a Coyote. So that being said, without further ado guys, we're gonna take this thing for a drive. <laughs> So now we're actually driving this Coyote, and I actually forgot to mention before, but this owner has a YouTube channel as well. It's called East Coast V8, no space. I'll put it like in a, in a link or whatever on top of the video right now. Definitely be sure to show him some love. I appreciate uh, you know him letting me uh, review his car today. And also he's actually making like a behind the scenes video right now of me filming this video. So now, give it. sport mode and it's just by itself again like I said before automatic uh, I like personally I like manual but it's still a it's still a coyote it's still fun thing too uh, he just explains me the owner just explains me that this is a performance tune on this and you do still get some of like the crackles and pops with the exhaust I personally like that a lot more than um, <laughs> the people next to us just gave us a weird fuck <laughs> they saw the cameras they're like what are these two idiots doing that's fine I'm kind of used to it now <laughs> uh, I, I personally like the performance tunes a lot more than something like a burble tune yes a burble tune or a pop tune or popcorn tune whatever you want to call it is pretty fun but it's also it's not like actually using the full potential of your car now another thing too i didn't mention before 
before, but this car looks like it redlines right at like seven grand. And I'm mean, like I said before, it gets uh, it gets peak horsepower at 6,400, uh, peak foot pounds of torque right over 1,400. Yeah, right under 1,400, right over 1,400, I believe. I could be wrong, but I mean, still, like this car has just over 85,000 miles. It's at 85,000. 206 miles right now on the odometer and it still just rips yeah oh my god dude all right second gear not going to hit it in the corner while the wheels turn I did also want to mention with the trunk gutted windows up uh, obviously you don't get a lot of cabin noise but with the trunk gutted you you hear a lot of that exhaust and it's not really oh yeah I don't want to say that it sounds really droney because I've been in cars with pipes that are just like right underneath the body and you get this like really really annoying drone sound and that's not what you get with this car with the trunk gutted but you do get you do just hear the exhaust a little bit more which I personally like Ford first came out with the S197 in 2005. They broke records for, you know, sales. And I mean, well, they're still breaking records with the S550 and um, the Mustang's always gonna be a very good selling car because it's cheap, it's cheap horsepower. And also the EcoBoost, the V6s, they are really cool looking commuter cars as well. Yeah, and another thing too, I mean, Again, people rip on these for the live rear axle. Everyone, you've heard the joke, the crowd killers, all that nonsense before. But honestly, like, this handles pretty good. It, it's not, again, it's not the best. It, it handles awesome. Like, I mean, the, the, the problem with these cars is, yes, they're live rear axle, so if you hit a bump going around a corner on, you know, the left side, it, it's gonna affect the right side as well. But, I mean, still, if you're, I'm not trying to, you know, throw shade at anyone, but if you're a half decent driver and you start losing it, you just let off. It's easier said than done, you know, preventing accidents. But you, one thing you got to keep in mind when you lose the back end of anything, really, just let off and don't go on the brakes too soon. Because if you go on the brakes too soon, then you're you're going to lose traction as well with that. Driven in three valve V8s or the 05 to 09 uh, Mustang GTs, and I do have to say, in my opinion, they do sound better than Coyotes. But still, I got the windows down, downshifts from fourth, third to second. Coyotes still sound sick. All right, guys, it's pretty much just gonna wrap up today's review. Again, I'll leave a link to the owner's channel down below. It's East Coast V8, no spaces or anything. He's going to be putting out a kind of like behind the scenes uh, video or like vlog of this review. And he's going to be putting out a lot of content with this car. And a huge shout out to him, huge thank you to him. And definitely be sure to show him some love guys. But like always, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. And until the next one, see you guys.